In this subsection, uh, I want to introduce you to a few primitive uh, algorithmic problems that are very simple to solve in a sequential, sequential model. But for the parallel execution to make it efficient and uh, get a good speed up from parallelism, uh, we have to invest a little more effort and uh, try a little harder to speed these things up. They will appear a little artificial at first, but we will use them right after to parallelize our efficient sorting algorithms, quick sort and merge sort. And then they will become absolutely vital for achieving the, the parallelism there. So let's get started with this. Uh, the first of these primitives is the prefix sum. And here um, we are given an array of n numbers. Uh, I should say the, the problem is also called cumulative sums or running totals, uh, depending on, on whom you ask. We're given an array of numbers. And uh, the goal is to, to change that array so that we have the uh, prefix sums. We, it's, it's fine if we do this in place. So we can overwrite the input array. And in fact, um, the algorithms that I'll show you will do this. Uh, but in principle, you could also write it to, a, to a, an output array, a, sec, uh, a separate array. And you want the um, cell in the output at position i to contain the sum of the elements up to and including position i. OK. So it's a very simple problem. If you look at this example, here's uh, an array with a bunch of zeros so that um, the sums don't get too big. Uh, you see that um, you just keep adding these things up. And if there's zeros up here, nothing changes. But then uh, we add the 5, so we get 8. Add the 7, 15, and then it stays the same until here when we add the 2 again. And of course, um, the rightmost entry in the output will be just the sum of all the elements in the input. So far, so good. Um, as always, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the Q&A or on the Campus Wire uh, lecture back channel. I'll try to monitor both um, while I'm speaking. And we'll pick up any of, of your questions um, when, when we get to a suitable point. So if you feel um, you understand this, let's see, um, first of all, how this would look like in sequential. So uh, we have this problem of computing prefix sums. We can do this uh, with a sequential algorithm. Uh, just take this array, and you're allowed to do this in place, right? This, is, um, this makes life a lot easier. Uh, so um, you can just overwrite the input. Uh, what is the sequential time you can achieve for this, for computing all these, uh, these sums um, of all the prefixes? I'll give you a little bit of time to think about it. Um, it's not, I'm not asking for a very, very fancy algorithm for this, uh, but try to do it as efficient as possible. We had 33 votes for the opening question on the programming languages. So I suppose we might be a, a few people short today. And almost all have voted now. So let's uh, show the results. Uh, we have a clear peak for uh, linear time, uh, but also for linear rhythmic and log n. And um, a few on the others. Now people are changing their mind, maybe. Uh, so yeah, um, the correct answer is, is linear time. And um, I'll, I'll show you briefly how to do this. Um, if you do this sequentially, uh, you actually just need one single little loop like this. So uh, you iterate with i from 1 to n minus 1. And then you always take uh, just the sum of the previous two. Now, this, this looks a little magic. But if you think about it, um, you, you add the, the next bigger prefix sum comes from just adding uh, the next number in. 
So uh, if you already have the, the prefix sum computed in ai minus 1, so that's the, if uh, this already is the sum of the numbers up to i minus 1, you just need one additional number to get the next prefix sum. That's why it's so simple. Um, and uh, in sequential time, this is also the best uh, you can do. So this is, um, this is the way to go. Now, uh, for parallelization, there's a problem here, and that's um, data dependencies. The previous step computed ai minus 1, and now I need it again for the next step. I need it right again now. Uh, I can't even uh, wait a little bit to... Uh, um, there's this... I always need the previous step to compute the next step. So every step depends on the previous one. And that's, that's the death of all parallel computation if you have these kinds of dependencies. So we have to do this differently if we want to parallelize it in a meaningful way. Um, to get started with this, let's look at a very simple problem, even simpler than prefix sums, just the sum. You're given an array of numbers and you want to compute the sum of all the numbers in the array. How would we do this? Uh, it's clear that we can solve this with uh, prefix sums um, just because uh, the last entry in the prefix sum array will be exactly this sum. Uh, but this is, this is simpler because we don't have to compute all the previous entries. Now, um, the sequential algorithm essentially does a tree like this. So we start by adding the first two numbers, then we add in the next uh, and the, the next and so on. I guess this should start with zeros. Uh, so uh, this is a bit inconsistent to the index um, indexing on the left, but uh, never mind. Uh, so you, you always add in the next number, and at the end you have computed the entire sum. Uh, it's also clear if if we do binary additions, if uh, if we compute the sum of n numbers, and the only operation we can do is compute the sum of two numbers, which is uh, what our RAM model tells us. You can always add two registers into a third, or well, you you remember how how this when how this is uh, was done in in the RAM machine. So if you can only add two numbers, you need n minus one additions to form uh, the sum of, of these n numbers. And the reason is that you essentially form a binary tree. You start with n leaves, that's all your elements, and you want to merge them together to a single thing. So you need n minus 1 internal nodes for this. Uh, what you can do, though, is instead of uh, using this tree, which is um, a degenerate one, you can make it balanced as a binary tree. And uh, then we have reduced the data dependencies a lot, right? These two elements can be computed in parallel to these two. So all these sums on one level, these can all be computed in parallel. And again, on the next level, they can all be computed in parallel because we don't have these data dependencies anymore between nodes on the same level. We do have data dependencies between parent and child, uh, but that's another story. All right. And then the height of the tree is what we can expect as parallel time. So let's, um, let's see how we can do this uh, in an actual uh, parallel algorithm. We're given this input, that's the initial array of numbers. Now, we would like to do this lowest level of the tree first. Uh, and this lowest level of the tree really just adds up two adjacent numbers. Um, we, we could do this here as well. Probably have to move myself away. We always just add the two adjacent numbers, but the trick is now, um, we want to do this for all prefix sums again, not just for sum. Uh, so uh, we do this for all uh, the pairs, including the overlaps. So maybe I, I should have uh, said here, uh, at this point, 
we've solved the problem of computing the sum of n numbers in parallel. Just the sum, not prefix sum. That's, that's just it. You take this tree. You compute uh, these two, these two, these two. Uh, you compute the tree bottom up, level by level. Then after log n steps, you have computed the value at the root, and that's the final output. And there's no way to improve upon this, uh, because you have to do the n minus 1 binary additions. And uh, as long as it's binary, the height has to be log n. So that's, that's the best you can do. And it's also work efficient, because you still do just n minus 1 additions in total. So um, coming back to the prefix sum problem, we now want to do all the prefix sums with these balanced trees. And it turns out uh, there's a simple pattern that allows you to do this, where you just interleave all the trees. And that's um, the lowest level here, just says always add to the current cell the one that is one step back. And you do this in parallel for all the positions in your array. In the next round, you do the same thing, uh, but instead of going from one to the previous position, you jump back two positions. So you do minus two, here it was minus one. And um, that, that corresponds to the next level of the tree, and you keep doing this until um, you have uh, reached the right level, the, the log n level. And if you now uh, look at this um, particular element, you can trace back the binary tree that you computed. There was an internal node here and here, and then you added those two up. And the result is the 29 that you put in here. Now, how can we make sure that 29 is actually the sum of all the numbers up to this position? So we should cover that range and have summed it up. So there's a little oddity because it's not a perfect power of two, but apart from that, we always have these two go into this one, and these two go into this one, right? So uh, you can you can follow this through, except the the three here is a little exceptional in that it's added in here a level later because uh, the powers of two didn't work out perfectly. So you get this, and that's. Uh, in that sense, um, you get exactly the same tree as we had on the previous slide for a single sum. Uh, but we could do this in parallel for all the positions. And you automatically get the right type of binary tree for all positions by just doing this. Um, going one step back, going two steps back, going four steps back, going eight steps back, always doubling your step size. All right, um, let's see how this looks in actual code. And because this is our first parallel algorithm, I want to go over um, the way we write this in pseudocode in a little more detail. Uh, again, it's important that we do this in place. Uh, we just overwrite the given array. That makes um, life easier. And uh, so this is all on the PRAM. So remember, that's, that means we have synchronous time steps. So uh, in, in pseudocode, we essentially use things like running uh, a for loop in parallel, which means we assign to the processing element i the ith iteration of the loop. All right. Note that this is only ever possible if there are no data dependencies between iterations. So if we just took um, the sequential code for prefix sum, and maybe uh, jump back a couple of slides. If we were just taking this code and add in parallel here, it would be a complete disaster because uh, we would compute um, 
these sums based on the original array. So we would really only get this first step. The sequential algorithm relied on data dependencies that one iteration is finished and then the second is started. Uh, for parallel loops like this one, we assume there are no such dependencies. So what is each of these, uh, what, is, what is this algorithm doing? Uh, we have a number of rounds and that's log n, that's the, the height of our tree. The step size, that's how much we jump back. We double that all the time, so that's the same as saying we use a power of two. And now this is actually writing the step in the array. And I split this up into two steps. Um, so we always take, make um, in AI, we add the thing that is step positions back. I could have just written AI is this, um, but to make this very clear, uh, we first do in parallel on all processing elements, the reading step, we read the old value of the array as it was before this round. Then we compute internally this axis in our register in the, in the PRAM. We compute the sum and then we all synchronously write it back so that uh, we always get the old values when we read and everyone gets the same old values. And then uh, in the next step, we write them back. Uh, that's what's behind this assumption, uh, which is essentially just saying we're working on the PRAM. Okay, so this is a, a very concise and nice way of writing parallel algorithms, uh, just having loops that run in parallel. Uh, but it's also a little subtle because you have to be very careful um, that you're not creating hidden data dependencies where you essentially rely that some execution is finished before another is started. Uh, that would be a disaster if you actually run it. So it would be, it would compute a wrong result. How good is this um, algorithm that we've came up, that we've come up with? Let's first look at the, the running time, the parallel running time. And uh, probably we just uh, do this here on the code. So maybe let me use um, blue for, uh, blue is not good. That's my color for correcting mistakes. Let's take green for the time. So uh, both of these steps, um, they take constant time because they're, um, for each processor, it's just reading two numbers, adding them and writing a number back to memory. Easy to do, constant time. The for loop is also constant time. Now this is weird because usually a for loop uh, is ti n times whatever the body takes uh, as a bound. But here we do this in parallel. So the parallel time is just the time of the longest of these uh, iterations. And uh, because they all take constant time, the entire for loop takes constant time. This is another constant contribution, just computing this power, which you can do with uh, binary shifts. So this is, um, this is easy to do. So it's uh, the only thing that's left is the out of for loop. And uh, that one actually takes um, log n time. And the reason is that we don't have uh, in parallel here. We have to do this one after the other. We first have to compute the, the first round and then Based on its results, we can use, we can go back to the next round. So that's why we uh, have logarithmic time. And remember uh, the parallel, the prefix sum problem also solves the sum problem. And for the sum problem, we convinced ourselves that uh, log n is a lower bound because we have to somehow compute um, the sum of n numbers using binary additions. And that's only possible with a data dependency of log n. Now, uh, let's also briefly look at the work. That is uh, the total amount of uh, operations that we do. And here, um, the only thing that really changes is this, this part. In work, 
we uh, don't have this in parallel, so we can pretend that this is not here. We're analyzing the work. And then, um, of course, uh, if, if each iteration of this inner, if, the, if each iteration of this loop here takes linear time now, then we do this log n times in total. So this becomes n log n. Uh, right, so um, that is not work efficient. It's not too bad. It's a logarithmic overhead um, over the sequential algorithm, but it's not work efficient. Okay. But it's still a good algorithm because it achieves very good speed up and the work is only slightly uh, suboptimal. And it's a very simple algorithm, which is uh, also a good thing to have. Um, this is <clears throat> for, for more complicated problems. This is a typical trade off you face. Uh, if you get more parallelism, then sometimes you have to work harder for this in exactly this technical sense that work goes up. Uh, for this simple problem, though, uh, we can actually get rid of the overhead in work. We can do uh, linear work and double the time, the parallel time. Uh, that algorithm is a, is a bit more complicated, so I'm, I'm not going to show it uh, because there's a, an alternative, which is um, very simple, conceptually very simple. It's also a, a building block, a technique that often works for um, improving the work in parallel algorithm. And that's uh, breaking things in blocks. Uh, I'll, I'll show the details in a second. Uh, we also achieve linear work, so we will get a work efficient parallel prefix sum algorithm. Um, and uh, the time will be three times the best that we can hope for. So instead of these login rounds, we have a, a three times login rounds, but that's still um, ignoring constant factors, it's still best possible. And uh, a factor of three is, is not usually a big deal. How does this work efficient uh, parallel prefix some algorithm work. So uh, it turns out that essentially a simple and standard trick uh, helps here, but it's, um, it's a bit uh, puzzling if you see it for the first time. So again, um, I don't want to rush it too much. Uh, the trick is to uh, start with blocks of roughly the size that you want your parallel time for the entire algorithm uh, to be at the end. What do you want your time to be? We want the time to be logarithmic. So let's start with a, a logarithmic size of blocks. So we break our array conceptually. We don't really break anything. We don't touch it. Uh, it's just uh, conceptually we divide the array into blocks of uh, log n indices. Those are these. Um, so I, I, I write this uh, round parenthesis for meaning up to b minus 1. So it's like, like you use uh, the interval notation for half open intervals in, in math. Uh, I use this to mean a0 up to b minus 1. And then the next one starts at b. OK. And then uh, for each of these, we just compute sequentially the prefix sums within these blocks. Um, maybe I'll, I'll do an example uh, with you while we're doing this. Uh, let's just do a small example so that we don't um, spend too much time on it. But um, let's suppose we have a simple array. It's all just ones. 12 times the number 1. 0, 4, 8. And uh, I indicated the block size here. This is not to scale. Uh, the array should be longer. I realized that log of 12 is not really 4. But it's not too far from it. Oh, actually, we round up, so it is. OK. Uh, B is 4. N is 12. Now, the first step is um, sequentially. I don't know. We, let's uh, take orange. For each of these, we compute the local prefix sums. And uh, well, these are simple. Oh, 
But we do this, uh, we do this in parallel and independently of each other. So we take three processors, um, PE0 computes this part, this is PE1's job, and this is PE2. So in parallel they compute, but using the sequential algorithm inside to compute the prefix sums for just these parts. Okay, that's the first step. Uh, the second step is we use the work inefficient algorithm that we've already, that I've just shown you, and use this as a black box. But now uh, we use it not for the entire input, because that would be too much work. We only use it on a reduced input, and in that case we use only the rightmost elements of each block. All right, so let's, uh, let's do this. Maybe um, to make the connection, this was done in orange. I don't know, let's take green for this one. So the next step is we take the rightmost uh, of these elements. And uh, in a sense, we um, create a new array that just contains these four elements. Um, well, okay, let's, uh, let's just draw it with very large boxes so that it's, uh, is a bit, it's maybe not beautiful, but should be clear what's meant. It's a small array, much smaller than the original one. It has size n over b, right? Uh, now we use the, is this green? Well, it's hardly visible, right? Maybe um, let's switch to the dark green instead. All right. Um, no, this color is fine. We use the, oh dear. Use work inefficient. algorithm on this to, well, make it into the prefix sums, which is uh, this. So I'm, I'm overwriting this, but uh, I'll, uh, I put it here so that you can see it. Um, and we'll, we'll analyze it in a second, then uh, hopefully it becomes obvious why this makes sense. And the last step is uh, for each of the blocks, again, um, in a sequential step, uh, we add the previous, um, the, the sum of the, well, the, the green part from the previous block to what we just computed. Uh, this, this wasn't a good explanation. Uh, so the third step is we copy this. And put it here. Okay, let's make a bit room. Uh, well, roughly like this, okay. And um, probably need this a, a bit higher. You know what? I'll make the entire thing a little smaller uh, and then uh, almost there. Okay, now what's the last step? The last step is simply adding um, this one to all of these, this one to all of these. So the last step in uh, PO, PE0 doesn't actually do anything. Here we get to 4 plus 1 and so on. And then you get this um, again. So it's the same processing elements, each is taking care of its little block of size b, and they just um, add this to all the elements, all right? So here you add 8 to all the elements, that's that's all there is to it. Okay, why is, why is that a good algorithm? Um, let's see. Uh, 
let's let's analyze the time and the work. So uh, this takes order B time because the processing elements uh, all do the th same thing in parallel, and each of them is just using the sequential algorithm, which, need, which needs linear time on a block of size b. That's efficient. That's good. Um, time b is what we want at the end. And that's why, remember why I said we choose the block size to be the time we want at the end. That's, that's why uh, this is fine here. OK, the uh, algorithm, the work inefficient algorithm had um, log n time. But here we apply it to a smaller n. Uh, but this is at most log n. So that's also good. Uh, remember, b is chosen as log n. So again, here, this is also log n. And for the, uh, for the last step, we have the same argument. It's order b because we just add a number to every position. That's even simpler than computing the prefixes. So um, the total time is log n. That's good. We didn't screw it up, but we already knew how to get parallel time uh, log n. So uh, the really important part is getting the work right. And so let's look at the work. How much work do we have in this first step? We have n divided b blocks, and we do order order b work per block. But that multiplies out to just order n. How about the green part? This is the interesting thing one. This is the interesting one now. Uh, the algorithm had n prime log n prime work because it was work inefficient. Remember, it used this n log n. But if you insert what n prime is, it is n divided log n times log of the same thing, n divided log n. And this log just splits. Uh, you can write this as log n minus log log n. And the minus log log n we can drop for an upper bound. And then the log n and the log n here cancels. So that's the same thing as order n. And that is what we wanted. We now got the work down to linear time by using the work inefficient algorithm, but only on a smaller input. All right. Uh, just to state that again here down there, um, here the work again is linear time by the same argument. We have n over b blocks of size b, and each of these causes uh, just um, order order b work. So um, we in total get linear work. All right, that's it. That's uh, an essentially optimal parallel algorithm for the prefix sum problem. Good. Um, one little application of this is um, to uh, study this problem, um, which is called compacting subsequences. This is uh, what we will use in the sorting methods. So um, pay attention to this one. We're given one array with numbers, and we're given another array with, well, essentially bits, 0 or 1. And what we want is to only select the positions from this uh, large array where we have a 1, but we want to compact it. We want to get only those numbers, but in a contiguous piece of memory. OK? Again, how would you do this sequentially? Well, you would just iterate through the array uh, to the two arrays in, in, in parallel. I have a, uh, an index that goes through this, and uh, whenever you see a one, you copy this over and increment some output index. Easy to do in sequential, in linear time. So uh, the question is how to do this um, in parallel. And uh, the trick is to use the prefix sums. 
using the prefix sums, we can compute exactly the uh, position in the output array for any number. Let's do um, a quick example here. So if you take the 7, if you compute the prefix sums over b, that sums up to 3. And that is the position in this array, um, maybe minus 1 if you start at 0. And that's what you see reflected in the code here. First, we compute the prefix sums in b. And then uh, we do a parallel loop. That's the important part now. We can do this entirely in parallel now, the second step, um, where if we have, so all processing elements do this if check, but only those that find in their cell a one continue doing, some, doing something. And what they do is they take the computed prefix sum, subtract minus one for because we started with zero, and then copy the element there to the array S. I hope this is, um, this is clear how this works and parallel prefix sums are the key ingredient to get rid of the data dependency we had in the sequential algorithm. Again, um, remember here, if we did this with a sequential algorithm where we just iterate through the arrays, uh, the problem with that is that the next position in this array depends on all the previous bits that we inspected. And by computing the prefix sums up front, which we just learned how to do this efficiently in parallel, uh, we can make the second step essentially trivial to parallelize. Okay, uh, let's see if you paid attention. And uh, to finish off with this, um, here's a little question about this. Uh, what's the parallel time and work achievable for compacting a subsequence um, of size n. All right, um, maybe a few more, but uh, yeah, we're almost at 30. So indeed, uh, most of you got this right. And uh, the answer comes exactly from the code here. Um, the key thing that um, costs in parallel execution is called is computing the prefix sums that gives us log n span, whereas the loop here is, is constant time in parallel. So that's log n time. And for the work, well, we can use the, the one, the algorithm we just seen uh, with linear work for the prefix sums. And then this is also linear work. So uh, we can indeed do this um, in this optimal time and, and work.